All right, so if you clicked on this video, there's a good chance that you're considering or already studying for a degree in physics or engineering. And it's a big decision because although they are very similar, the one you choose may end up deciding what sort of career you can have and even how much money you can earn. Now, I have a degree in both physics and space engineering, so I've lived on both sides of the fence. And so in this video, we're gonna go over the subtle differences between the two degrees and where they can lead in terms of a future career. Now before we dive into physics and engineering individually, let's first talk about what sets them apart because while they may appear to be very similar, they are actually built on two very different mindsets. At its core, physics asks why, while engineering asks how. Now what do I mean by that? Well. A physicist might ask why do planets orbit the way they do or why do two objects collide in the way that they do whereas an engineer might ask how do we create a rocket that gets to orbit or how do we create a bridge that doesn't collapse another way of thinking of this is how do these fields actually approach progress so physics typically focuses on uncovering the natural laws that govern the universe and the way the world works, even if those laws don't have any practical application right now. Whereas engineering focuses much more on the application of those laws. And another way of thinking of it is that engineering uses the laws that we've just discovered in physics. Now one thing that physics and engineering do share is a strong reliance on problem solving skills and technical skills like maths. Now if you wanna sharpen those skills even further, you might be interested in today's video sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant makes learning STEM topics engaging and practical through interactive hands-on lessons. Instead of passively watching videos, you're solving problems, exploring concepts, and developing a true intuition, which is really important whether you're interested in physics or engineering. The maths and scientific Thinking courses are perfect for physics, helping you develop the fundamental tools needed to understand the universe at a deeper level. And if you're more into the engineering side of things, Brilliant has courses on electrical circuits, technology, and even data science, all designed to help you build an understanding of how modern technology works. And on top of this, all of the content on Brilliant has been crafted by professionals from some of the most respected institutions in the world, from MIT to Caltech to Microsoft to Google. So to try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for 30 days and get 20% off your annual premium subscription, head to brilliant.org slash Lewis Cooper or click on the link in the description. So now that we've had a taste of the subtle differences between the two fields, let's start looking at them individually, starting with Physics. Now I've made a couple of videos on this already, but for the most part, if you're studying physics at university, no matter what sort of specialty you want to go into later on in your degree or in your future research career, you'll typically start on the same pathway as every other physics student. So no matter if you're going in for astrophysics or quantum physics or medical physics or nuclear physics, you come in at year one, typically learning about forces and energy and motion. And as you progress, you may get more modules on general relativity and high energy astrophysics or quantum physics or, or special relativity. Now, when it comes to the benefits of studying a physics degree, there are many, but for me, some of the highlights were the breadth of topics that you learn and how endlessly fascinating it is. Because of the sort of general approach at the start of your degree, you'll get exposure to a bunch of different topics that you may not have found interesting to begin with or may not have even known that you would have found interesting. For me, that would have been something like quantum mechanics, which although was very mathematical and very intense, I found it endlessly interesting despite going into the degree with primarily an interest in astrophysics. Now with a breadth of topics that you learn in a physics degree, you'll also come out with a breadth of skills because different topics and different fields will develop different skills. For example, quantum mechanics will develop your math skills really heavily, whereas astrophysics will develop your programming and your data analysis skills as we refine data from telescopes. And so we see this all the way through physics. Different modules, different courses will develop different skills. And those skills are hugely transferable outside of the academic environment. And this generally means that physics students are some of the most employable of all of the degrees. And you see physics students go into engineering jobs, into finance jobs, into tech jobs, and go further into education. And what that really shows is that physics students are valuable everywhere. Because while the physics knowledge is, if not useful, at least impressive, the really impressive thing is the amount of skills that those physics grads will have from 
maths for programming, uh, data analysis, data visualization, complex problem solving. All of these skills are so sought after by industry. And one of those skills that I really think is important and has really helped me in my career is the fact that physics teaches you how to think. It's not one of these courses that sort of pins you down to a certain way of thinking. It really sort of forces you to come with out of the box solutions for complex problems, which is again, really, really employable. Now, having mentioned careers, let's talk about the downsides to a physics degree, because while it's a very useful and important degree, here's the harsh truth. If you get a degree in physics, you'll probably not become a physicist, or at least won't get a job in physics. And that's because there are much more graduates in physics than there are positions available for research. So unless you're going into further study through a PhD and into academic research, the chances are you're not going to become a physicist and you'll usually end up in careers in finance or tech or engineering. In fact, only around 9% of physics grads end up in the field of science after graduating, whereas most end up in, in those other fields of IT and tech and finance and engineering. So it's important to sort of get your expectations in check. On top of this, a physics degree can feel frustratingly abstract and at times even a bit pointless. I mean, think of it this way. It's like knowing exactly why a rocket can escape Earth's atmosphere without ever getting to design the propulsion system or the guidance system System, which actually allows it to do that because that's an engineer's job. And so if you're one of those type of people who much prefers getting hands-on and practical, then physics can be frustratingly abstract at times. Now, having said all that, physics, again, is a very interesting subject. You get to immerse yourself in a range of topics which will keep you interested throughout the entire degree and you get to sort of curate those as you go through the degree. So now that we've looked at physics, let's start looking at engineering. And the first thing to note about engineering is that there's not really such a thing as just engineering. What I mean by that is that unlike physics, where you go in and everybody starts off generally the same and starts to specialize later on, when it comes to engineering, you typically start a course in the specialty of engineering you want to graduate in. So that could be mechanical engineering or nuclear or aerospace, civil, electrical, or any other type of engineering, although those ones are most similar to, to physics. Now, I'm not gonna go into the specifics of each of those individual courses. One, because it would take up far too much time on this video, but two, and more importantly, is because I didn't actually study those as an undergrad, so I didn't have as much experience in those. I only did a spacecraft engineering master's degree. But what we can look at is the subtle differences between courses in those engineering fields and the ones we would see in physics. So let's look at something like thermodynamics, which is likely to be taught in many different engineering degrees. Now, it focuses on applying our understanding of heat to different real-world scenarios. For example, designing an engine or cooling a power plant plant or designing refrigerators and heat pumps by applying our understanding of heat and energy transfer. Whereas in a physics degree, we would study something like thermal physics, which is all about understanding how particles at a subatomic level interact through concepts like statistical mechanics, entropy, and the laws of thermodynamics. And there are plenty more examples of those subtle differences. The point being that engineering degrees will typically focus on the practical application of physics principles. That being said, engineering isn't just all hands-on design. There's still a hefty dose of maths and physics and theory, but the goal is to be able to apply it. The focus shifts from understanding our world to creating something that helps people live in it. Now, one of the biggest benefits of an engineer degree is the job market for engineering itself. To put it simply, there are far more jobs in engineering than, say, physics. And what that means is that you're much more likely to get a job in engineering than you are to get a job in physics with those same degrees. And on top of this, if you study a specific engineering degree, you've already graduated with a job-ready skill set. For example, if you had a mechanical engineering degree, you're much more likely to get a job in mechanical engineering or even in spacecraft engineering than if you you had just a physics degree and try to apply for those same jobs because there are engineering specific skills that you learn in those degrees which you would not get through a physics degree. And this can also help with sort of imposter syndrome because you're not left wondering what jobs you're qualified for and which ones you're not. You know what skills you had from university and you know what you're able to do and you can apply for jobs that use those skills and push those skills more so than you can with a physics degree where you might not know exactly which jobs you're cut out for. Now another big benefit of engineering compared to physics especially when it comes to jobs, 
is that engineers are pretty much always needed everywhere. I mean, you're always gonna need engineers to work on energy systems and water systems, but you may not always need a physicist to be researching fundamental physics, even if it pains me to say that. And it's because of this that we see some of the highest paid graduates being engineering grads. Now, although the specialism can be very beneficial, it does come with drawbacks. And the main one being that you are specialized from the start. And so if you decide or find out that you don't actually enjoy that specific specialism of engineering, then you're pretty much stuck, or at least you have to go through a bunch more hurdles to get to the specialism that you enjoy. So for example, if you start a degree in mechanical engineering, but you'd much rather go into civil engineering later on in, the, in your degree, and you find out that sort of halfway through, it's gonna be much more complicated for you to switch than if, for example, you studied physics, and halfway through your degree, you decide you wanna go into astrophysics. That's a much simpler switch. Another thing to consider with engineering is that it can oftentimes feel a little bit shallow, and it feels like a lot of the time you skip the why to get to the how. So if you're someone who enjoys diving deep into why things work the way they do, you may not touch on as much of that as you'd like in an engineering degree compared to something like physics, where you really get down to the most fundamental levels of why. I mean, the whole point of physics, as we've already discussed right at the start, is to get to the lowest level of why. Why does the universe work the way it does? And continually asking why, why, why. Whereas engineering typically will cut off that why chain at some point and just skip to how. How do we create something useful from this understanding? Now, one thing that I've found through personal experience in an engineering career that didn't get taught to me at university, and I know other people have also experienced this, is that when you're very early on in your career, it can feel like you're just a cog working on tiny isolated parts of a much bigger project. It's very rare for a graduate engineer to be working on project level work. So for example, if your dream is like, like mine to design spacecraft, then you're not very likely to be working on the spacecraft level design. You're much more likely to be working on sort of subsystems, very small parts of that bigger spacecraft. I mean, you could be working on something as small as designing a bracket that connects two parts of a spacecraft together for months. And it's very rare that you'll be working on the entire design process of a spacecraft. So if you are looking to do that, then, well, there's not actually much you can do. You have to sort of work your way up through the experience chain of working in engineering. So this contrasts with a physics career in, for example, research, where you've got much more authority and control over the direction of the research if you're the one that's leading it, which is much easier to do early on in your career, especially if you get to a PhD level where you're doing your own research, or if you get to a postdoc level where you're helping a researcher with their research. So physics or engineering, which is the better option? Well, the answer, as you probably guess, is it completely depends on what interests you and what excites you the most. The good news is no matter which path you choose, both will teach you how to think critically and solve complex problems and work on the cutting edge of human knowledge and technology. At the end of the day, it's not about which degree is best, it's about which degree is best for you and the future that you want. I hope you found this video useful. If you know someone who might find it useful, please share it with them. I wanna say thanks so much for watching. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Good luck with your degrees and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.